Whew, got one. Man, I think I see another snakehead. Two of them, oh, there's two of them swimming right at me. Holy crap. Oh, oh. Got it. Holy crap, I have doubled up. That's a bass. Hey there folks, how you doing? So, for today's video, in very stark contrast to the wintry landscape you see behind me here, what this video is actually going to be about is frog fishing in the height of summer over on Madelman Creek for snakehead and bass. You'll see how I approach the situation. This is actually at the meetup that we have for the Legion of Anglers last year. So keep an eye out for our schedule as well on Facebook so you can join us on the water. But as we go on with this video, I'll give you the tips about the tide, about the structure, the lures, how I work them and more. But let's go ahead and get to the actual action. At the end of the video, I'll run through the gear. I'll run through the tips explicitly that I haven't already covered in the course of the fishing action. Let's go fishing. Now, because of my various mechanical issues with the kayak and the car today, what I'm going to do is just hook around this point. There's an open bay over here I'm going to go check out. Now, the best water that i found here, as you go up here around the corner on the right, or you go around the corner, then it'll be on your left, there'll be an open bay that, on an outgoing tide, usually a lot of feeding bass, a lot of feeding snakehead. There's one farther up, but it's a bit of a hike. But that's basically what you're looking for right now are going to be your bays and your creeks. Fish the mouth of them and then fish the interior too while you still have enough water in there to do it. Yeah. But those are the best areas I've found here. Fish here a lot? Uh, not, not a lot. I've probably been here well, five. This is my first time here. See, I've probably been here five or six times. I'll take whatever advice I can get. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's what you're looking for. Anytime you find a creek or a bay on an outgoing tide like this, fish the mouth and then push your way in and fish any kind of like eddies, any type of ambush points. Like I, I used to fish a rivet frog here, like a swim frog. That, that's done me really well. And then once they get way, way back into the pads, kind of the same lures or the, your top water popping like frogs do really well. Frog. Yep. Yup. Cambo. Jesse, how's it going, bro? I'm gonna get a, a cast in for a few hours and then probably get my car towed home. <laughs> Home? I'm probably going to need one, yeah. <laughs> issue now. I thought it was electrical. Now it's looking like a fuel pump issue. And it, it, it's funny because I made it all the way down here. No issues. I turned it off to load up my kayak. Got my kayak all good to go. Went to park. And you might have seen me over there riding the struggle bus. I tried to start it about four or five times. No, no go. Then I got it started. Made it up the hill. Died on the hill. Oh, turned it off, tried to crank it, wouldn't crank, turned it off, tried to crank it, cranked, gassed it, made it to a parking spot. Hey, dude, thank God. Yeah, I know, dude. Hell yeah. But that's where I'm at right now, so I'm going to stay close to home. <laughs> I feel you, man. But I mean, there's some beautiful areas up there if y'all want to explore them. If you want to join me, you're more than welcome to over in this bay. It's a pretty big bay, man. Well, but There were plenty of bass that stayed all up in them lilies where you were talking about. Them, yep. No, it's good water up there, dude. But I'm just I'm just staying close because I know that I'm gonna have issues today, man. You know. Trooper with one pedal, my man. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> it's like I was this close to not coming out today. I was like, wow. man, I, I'm I'm worried about the car. My pedal drive is <laughs> like yesterday, like a snakehead. I think I, I told some of y'all knocked my glasses off my face and yeah. It, the post, man. It, it's it's been a mess lately, bro. I mean, the fish has been good, but yeah. but <laughs> the rest of my life been a mess. I'm gonna give it a shot, man. Good luck, fellas. Oh, uh, keep an eye out for fry balls too, man. It's definitely fry ball season. I think I just saw a snake. That's what I get for not making sure she had it before I set that hook. I saw 
all that. Whew, got one. Man, the gripper. Where you at? There you are. I think I see another snakehead. Two of them. Oh, there's two of them swimming right at me. Holy crap. All right, Nothaburi. Look, there's two snakehead just cruising together. Look at them. Oh, oh. Got him. Holy crap. I have doubled up. That's a bass. I thought it was snakehead cruising again. Is that crazy or is that crazy? Look at that. <laughs> is there a wet? <laughs> yes, there is a wet. All right, here's one. Back to back cast. Is that wild or what? All right, you little beauty. Mr. Bass, Mr. Bass will come in at 16 and a half with a tail pinch. Got you. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's see what Mr. Snakehead comes in at. Probably about 23. 23 and a half. And there she is. All right, beauty. Thanks for playing. I think I'm gonna dive back into this pad field because I'm not seeing too much action out here on this grass flat. And I think the snakehead and the bass tend to prefer the combination of the top cover from these pads and the bottom cover from the submerged hydrilla. At least I believe this is hydrilla. I am by no stretch of the imagination a botanist, so if anyone knows better, <laughs> feel free to correct me. But every catch that I've had has come from inside the pad field. I've done a little bit of casting on the exterior but nothing to show for it. So what I'm doing is I'm casting to some likely spots, but a lot of what I'm doing is really fan casting because there's so much structure out here that they could really be anywhere. And as I fan cast, I'm looking around. Oh, I'm looking around to see if I see any movement. Because that's how I got the first hit on the snake head that I missed, or that he missed me and then I set the hook like a rookie instead of making sure he had it. That's also how I caught the bass, as I saw those two bass cruising after I had landed my first snake. So keeping your eyes peeled and paying attention to what's going on around you out here in this pad field is crucial. And it's also crucial for this technique to work that you have low wind. If you have high wind, the surface is gonna be disturbed and the pads are gonna be moving with the wind. So if it's windy, this kind of fishing really doesn't work out because you, you can't really, at least not to the same degree, because you, you just can't tell what is moving from fish and what's moving from wind. So I'm just working my way into and through this pad field, casting to likely spots, fan casting, and watching for movement. Though in a minute, I'm going to take a break from casting and go ahead and post that second bass to the Facebook page to hopefully help other folks out there here for the meetup catch some fish. Ooh, big movement, big movement, big movement. Ooh, that's a big snake, Jesus. These snakes are missing left and right today, and it's driving me crazy. That was a big one, too. I'm getting way too excited. I should be verifying before I'm setting the hook. Acting like a rookie out here. Just spooked them off to the right. Coming for it. 
What the? How many times are you gonna miss this, you idiot? I think he had it by the tails that time, because I checked and I felt something. That's a big fish, too. God, that's frustrating. Well, folks, it's been quiet for a while now, and that kind of worries me. It could mean the tide is dying. And when the tide dies at Madam Woman, good luck. I have never, ever had a good fishing day on a slack tide at Madam Woman. Never. Like if that tide isn't moving, <laughs> good luck. He missed it. God, these snakehead are missing a lot today. Had one snakehead out of all these hits today actually get the lure in its mouth. All the rest of either short struck or missed completely. <sighs> killing me. Freaking killing me. Oh, see that? He missed again. How the. Are you blind? Messing with the tails. What a clown. I'm following it. Got it! Got it! Now that's why this one was having trouble. He's a bitty guy. He's an itty bitty. There you are. Probably about a 17, pushing 18 at most. There she is. <laughs> I love these fish. They are so much fun. Whew, okay. Oh, movement on my left. Movement on my left. These pads are tough to fish sometimes. So once you go over a pad like that, a lot of times you end up spoofing the fish. Ideally, you want your lure with a line to fall down beneath the pads so you can just pull the frog across the surface like you normally would in open water. All right, I've made it within casting distance of an area that I've seen multiple blow-ups now. Let's see what I can do about it. That's right in the vicinity. Well, that's kind of a hard landing. Might have spooked him. And that's the thing with spooking snakehead and hydrilla this thick. A lot of times you won't even know that you spooked them. They'll just dive down into this hydrilla and you'll never know. You'll never know they were even there. And that's more like it. I am fish on. I think it's a bass. Yep. Got her. Oh, that's a nice bass. That's my biggest of the day. No doubt about that. Oh, ah, cutting me up good. There we go. There we go. That's a nice bass. Look at that. Nice one. Let's get a measurement on you. You almost made me extend the board. Hooked him in at. They're not 18 and a half with a tail pin. All right, gorgeous. Here she goes. Thank you. Bye-bye. There she goes. Had another fish miss me. Snake had her bass, I'm not sure, but I think it was a snake. These fish are just missing left and right. Driving me 
freaking bonkers. <laughs> oh, we had good fish too. Yeah. Oh, oh. That was something else. What a clown. God bless America. for a second there. Like that. Ooh. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a bass. I've landed two snakehead, but I mean, I've had so many. Oh, Jesus, that was a big one. I just saw one hit. The, the bite is on fire, bro. I know it is. That outgoing tide at Mad Woman, I swear to God, dude. It's slow, though. I've seen like I'm literally was sitting here, I'm standing, I've been at the dock for about 20 minutes. I was couch snakehead. I had the dock? Yeah, they're like sitting here coming in and out. I seen them coming out of the grass, coming up and in and out. I've seen about, about 10 of them. I swear to God, that outgoing tide, man, is just nuts. Uh oh. Oh no. I think we're almost out of clouds. That means it's about time to go. Because we're out of clouds, it is going to get stupid hot. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I think I was just like trying to get psyched last night. So I ran across some of your videos. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, <laughs> good man. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I've been uh, I've been fishing for a long time, catching bass left and right, but I miss snakes all the time on everything I throw. I, I think it's probably an impatient thing. And that's, too soon. I mean, that's usually part of it. The other part of it is just they have such hard mouths. It's it's like when you set the hooks on the snakehead. Say again? It's their fault. Yeah, it'll play it on the fish, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, when you're fishing snakehead, it's like when I'm fishing bass, I can, you know, it's, it's I can I can pop the hook through. When I'm fishing snakehead, it's woof, like a whole body motion, you know? Like, it, it, especially when they're back in this hydrilla and everything and you got to wrestle them out, if you don't bury those hooks in them, Odds are they're going to shake off because their head shakes are so powerful. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of bass. I've caught a couple, but there's a lot of them sitting at these creek mouths and on the edge of these things. I've seen a bunch of them just now, but man, are they line shy? And I'm running straight braid today, so now that the sun came out, they don't want anything to do with what I'm throwing. Yeah. Jeez. But yeah. Well, good luck to you, fellas. Well, folks, shortly after this conversation with some folks out on the water, the sun came out and that pretty much spelled doom for the fishing. Because as soon as the sun came out, the tide went slack as well, a slack low tide. And at that point, those fish did not want to hit anything. That bite was over. And that seems to be a pattern that I've always encountered fishing Mata Woman, especially in any Potomac waters. If that tide's not moving, generally speaking, good luck. <laughs> good luck. But as you see me getting ready to take out here, I want to say a special thanks to everyone who came out for this Legion of Anglers meetup. And then again, a special thanks to my buddy Rashawn, who ended up following me all the way home, <laughs> just to make sure that my vehicle didn't break down. And luckily I was able to limp my way home without having to get it towed all the way from Indian Head back to Southern Baltimore. So let's go through some of the tips to help me be successful out here and will hopefully help you be successful on the water too. First things first, let's talk gear. You're fishing heavy pads and heavy grass. Anything less than a heavy power rod, fast action tip, anything less than that, you're asking for trouble. Same thing goes with your line. The line I'm fishing here is 40 pound Berkley X9. X5 would also be a great choice out here, but I wouldn't go any lower than 40 because I've heard of guys snapping off 30 pound test or higher in this really thick, thick cover. When you go to set that hook out here, you've got to drive those hooks home like you're trying to cross their eyes. Because if it's a snakehead out here, their mouths are hard and they're going to bury themselves inside of this hydrilla and these pads. When they do that, you have to have a good hook set to make sure that they're not going to get off. 
Now, aside from that, let's talk about the presentation. Like I said earlier in the video, what I'm doing out here is I'm fan casting, but while I'm fan casting, I'm looking around for movement. And if I spy that movement, I am going to cast to it with a quickness because that's how they'll give themselves away. Again, to reemphasize, if it's a windy day, it's not going to be a great pattern or a great technique to work because the wind's going to move the pads and the surface of the water so much, you probably won't be able to discern snakehead or bass movement from the regular movement being caused by the wind. For conditions out here today, we lucked out. It was going to be excruciatingly hot. And it was in the afternoon, but in the morning we had that cloud cover. But even more important than our own comfort out here, that cloud cover helps those fish feel more safe. So we had the combination of an outgoing tide and cloud cover. And that is hard to beat. Those are just almost perfect, perfect conditions. And had I not been setting the hook too early on a lot of those fish, I probably would have walked away with a lot more on the day. Can't wait to see you all again on the water. Check our Legion of Anglers Facebook page. I'll have a link to it in the video description so you can check out our slate of events for the year and hopefully join us out there on the water. If you enjoyed this video, folks, found it helpful and entertaining, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.